Now, I've spoken to some Gambian ladies and they have said to me that sometimes the Gambian men abuse the kola nut tradition and they will go to the father with the kola nut and then say to the woman we're married and then the woman ends up sleeping with the man giving herself to the man believing well we're married we haven't done the formal wedding yet but we're, we're married because he's gone with the kola nuts to my father and sometimes the lady ends up pregnant. And unfortunately, sometimes they turn around and the man marries someone else. So even though he persuaded the girl to say we're married, they were not officially married because they'd just done the first colon up. And his eye was on someone else after that time. So... I've been told by a Gambian woman, until we've gone to the mosque, we're not married, so I'm not going to give myself to a man until we've done the first colon at the second colon and gone to the mosque and done the wedding. And now a lot of younger ladies are saying, and also gone to justice. Because if we travel, or if he travels, I need to be his legal wife. Okay? So now we're going to talk about just, um, sorry, now we're going to talk about the mosque. After the kola nut, we go to the mosque. Now it's usually the man that goes to the mosque, not the woman. The woman stays at home and is preparing for the celebration. And the man with the imam and his peers will go to the mosque and do the formal wedding. So the formal wedding is usually just the men at the mosque, while the woman is preparing the aunties, the sisters, everybody's preparing the bride in her beautiful regala, getting ready for her husband to come back from the mosque. When the husband comes back from the mosque now, this is when the celebration begins. And if you've ever been to a Gambian wedding, it's amazing, it's vibrant, there's drumming, there's dancing, especially in a Jola wedding, the dancing, the women are amazing. But all the tribes, there's dancing, there's drumming, the kids are, everyone's dressed up to the nines, the children are, are dancing and having a good time. The food is amazing at a Gambian wedding. And it's amazing, it's a fabulous celebration usually the whole village or town or area all their friends and their family come from afar and everyone comes and joins in that celebration and after that celebration then they are married um as a muslim couple yeah as a husband and wife so from the diaspora, if you are going to marry a Muslim man, it is encouraged that you become a Muslim. Now, some diaspora women say to me, but V, I'm a Christian, or V, I don't want to become a Muslim. Now, it is not frowned upon for a Gambian Muslim man to marry a woman who is non-Muslim or who is Christian. That is okay. It's not they would rather the woman convert to be a Muslim, but if the woman is a Christian, the man can still marry. What I'm told is if it's the other way around and it's a Muslim woman going to marry a non-Muslim man, that is, that is definitely frowned upon. And the reasons I'm given is this. They say that when a Muslim man marries a woman who's non-Muslim, that man is more likely going to be able to persuade the woman throughout their marriage to become a Muslim. But they say that when a Muslim woman marries a man who's non-Muslim, it's going to be harder for the Muslim woman to persuade the non-Muslim man to become a Muslim. And some of the time the non-Muslim man could persuade the Muslim woman to come away from being a Muslim. 
And this is why they say it's more frowned upon a Muslim woman marrying a non-Muslim man, but they accept a Muslim man marrying a non-Muslim woman. Woman. I hope you're following me. <laughs> and I hope I'm making a little bit of sense. So, if you're marrying a Muslim man, you need to study and you need to go to classes to learn the Quran and to learn what it is to be a Muslim. But the men need to also be very careful because a lot of men in the Gambia, um, especially a lot of men that hang around with the tourists, when your diaspora woman becomes a Muslim, she's going to understand what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. So as a Muslim, it's frowned upon for you to drink alcohol. As a Muslim man, you shouldn't really be having sex outside of marriage. As a Muslim man, you should respect your woman. You shouldn't be asking your woman for money. You should be, be providing for your woman, loving your woman and looking after your woman and your children. As a Muslim man, you should respect your physical body and you shouldn't abuse your body in any way with drugs or any kind of substance. So if you have a diaspora woman and you encourage her to become a Muslim and she becomes a Muslim and she understands everything that you believe in as a Muslim man, she might take you to task and say, hold on, you're not doing this. Why are you not doing this? Why are you not praying five times a day? Why are you drinking alcohol? Why are you smoking marijuana? Why are you doing these things when actually you say that you're a Muslim and it's against your religion? I've now become a Muslim, but it feels like you're quite hypocritical. So guys, if you are persuading your diaspora woman to become a Muslim, think about what this is also going to be for you because you should be an example. You should be an example to lead this woman to becoming a Muslim. Even if she's not a Muslim when you marry, every day you should be an example to her so that she sees the way you act, she sees the way you speak, she sees the charity that you do and it opens her heart and it makes her feel like, yes, I respect that, that is something I want to do.